Hello again guys. I just thought I'd do another little vlog today. It's rather a random one, but the idea occurred to me a few days ago. So, um, at the moment I should say I'm reading Graceling by Christian Cashore, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I mean, I mean hardly, hardly in it at all, but um, really enjoying it. It's been a while since I've read what I would term high fantasy or really strictly just pure fantasy stuff at all, even though I know it's meant to have romance and things entwined. But I think you know you've got a good you've got a good world created when you have to keep going back to a map that's provided and checking for references when whenever they list towns and places they're going to. And um just being in the beginning of it, it's already reminding me of the series that I'm going to recommend because today is about Australian authors and Australian books. And of course there's a million uh names and uh, novels I could give you, but I'll just pick a few that are on my shelves. And um, one that Graceling's already reminding me of is the Ober Newton Chronicles by Isabel Carmody. If you haven't read those, then you are clearly insane, and you need to go and find them in a bookstore or a library, wherever you can. I'm not sure if they're readily available in the US, but from what I've learnt, they should be. There's five in the series thus far, except in the US I should say there's six, because I believe the fifth novel was split in two for some reason over there. And Isabel Carmody began the series in 1989, so it's been going for quite a while and it's still going. I think she's got at least another one planned. I think there's meant to be two more. There should end up being seven, just like Harry Potter. But this is the second in the series. I don't know where my first one is. But they're excellent. It's a fantasy series, but there's lots of different elements combined in there. It is a very dense read. Um, lots of names. Lots and lots of names. To the point where I think when the fourth and fifth book came out, they had to include a glossary at the beginning of all the <laughs> names featured so you could remember who was who. Um, lots of names, lots of places. Uh, lots of different uh, things that are going on within it that keep getting cross-referenced. So, um... I find it pretty dense, but it's really, really engaging, and I love it. And the heroine, her name is Elspeth, and she's um, quite feisty and very independent, but without doing it consciously, it's not like it, it, the author was ever trying to make a statement through her. It just it feels really innate. The characterization's great. I just I really recommend the series. If you like Graceling and Fire especially, I would recommend picking it up. It's fantabulous. And um, Isabel Carmody has quite a few fantasy series out and also some just standalone novels as well. Another series she has is the Legend Song Trilogy, of which there are only two books out thus far. Again, I don't know where my first one is, but this is the second one, Dark Song. As you can see, it's pretty thick. But again, this is really, really good. Dense. Um, but very well written, and it's actually more, um, I would say it's a more emotionally engaging read in terms of the two protagonists, possibly, than than the Albert Newton Chronicles are. Um, Elspeth, who is the narrator of this series, tends to be a bit distant at times. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed this series as well, and I recommend this stuff. Isabel Carmody, just read her stuff, please. You won't regret it, I promise. Okay, um, right. Um, another novelist for teens who was huge, huge in Australia, especially in the 1990s and early 2000s, is a guy named John Marsden. That's him back there. And he had a series called The Tomorrow Series, which started with Tomorrow When the War Began. And there's seven, six, I'm not sure. <laughs> There's a fair few books in that series, and they were massively popular to the to the point where you would walk into any bookstore when I was around 12, 13. You'd go in to a store, and the the um the staff would run up to you, and they'd be like, "Oh, have you read Have you read John Marsden's Tomorrow series? Have you read them? They're excellent. Oh my, everybody loves them." And then they'd they'd be handing them to you. And all along the walls, there'd be the recommendations. It, it was like 
I suppose it was our just our little Australian equivalent of Twilight in its own way for a little while there. That's a horrible comparison to make, but in terms of the hype, I would say. And so I think I left that store with the first four books, having not read them at all. I just purchased the first four because they were so insistent, and I read the first one and I didn't enjoy it very much. So I did keep the first novel, um, primarily because it's, it was such a thing uh, here, so I thought, well, I'll keep that just for prosperity or whatever. Um, but I gave the next three to a friend who loved the series. The first book's actually just been recently made into a film. It was um, shot only about 40 minutes away from where I'm living, which is cool. And I believe it's had an international release, so yeah, that's tomorrow when the war began. They were huge in Australia. Massive. He also has standalone novels, which I prefer much more than that series. Um, there's a continuation of that series as well, called The Ellie Chronicles. I'm not sure how many are in that one. Three, maybe? Um, but he's got standalone novels that I think are, I prefer. Um, these are two of them. There's Take My Word For It and So Much To Tell You. This is a companion piece to this one. There's another two that I really recommend that aren't on my shelf at the moment, but one's called Checkers and the other is called Letters From The Inside. And I read those in high school. They were kind of on just our um, recreational reading lists. So I read those and really enjoyed them. So I recommend John Larson stuff. He's really good at getting into the mind of a teenage girl. It's quite freaky. But yeah, read that stuff. Um, this is another good one. Feeling Sorry for Celia. Um, I believe that this is actually a companion piece to another series that I wasn't aware of, but I saw it on Compulsive Reader's site. Um, on her vlog, I think. But this was a really good read. My friend gave it to me, actually, for a present. Hi, Fran! You gave me this book, thank you. And it was really sweet. And it's actually recommended by Marlena Marchetta, who wrote Looking for Ella Brandy, which was on my shelves again. I don't know where half my stuff is, I swear. But she wrote that, and Finnegan of the Rock, which is a fantasy novel that I really want to read and on Jellico Road, which I believe was released in America as Jellico Road, and that's been really popular with American vloggers. I've seen it on lots of the in my mailboxes, so um, I recommend Marlena Machetta's work as well. But this is Jacqueline Moretti? I don't, I have no idea. But yeah, this was a good book, and Marlena Machetta's stuff is really good too. She also wrote Saving Francesca. Yeah, she's got good stuff, and that features on a lot of uh, syllabuses in high schools over here. And finally, um, another fantasy author, uh, Juliette Marillia. She's quite well known for her adult series. I think she's got the Seven Waters... Is it Trilogy? I'm not sure. But she's got a few uh, fantasy um, sagas in adult fiction. But... Um, Again, my friend Fran turned me on to a novel of hers called Wildwood Dancing, which I read and really, really enjoyed. And this is a continuation in that universe, and this is called Cybelle's Secret. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to. But I really like her writing style, and this is a Aussie author. So, yeah. Um, other authors that just come to my head, I would say read Libby Haythorn. Um, she wrote a novel called Thunderwhip, which I read when I was 12. And she actually uh, grew up in the same uh, town, city, as, as I did, and she set that novel in um, bushland and that that's around, around here, which is really cool, and that's a really lovely novel. There was a sequel to that as well called Chrysalis, Chrysalis, I'm terrible at pronouncing that word, but it was, it was lovely. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm scouring my brain for more names to throw at you, but I would certainly say, if you're a fantasy fan and a YA reader, uh, certainly pick up Isabel Carmody, because you're nuts if you haven't read The Open Newton Chronicles. You won't regret it, I promise. And because it hasn't finished yet, you have books to look forward to as well. So, um, she's not exactly a pro... pro she is a prolific writer, just not in that particular series, necessarily, because she has other stuff that she's writing as well. So, you'll have things to keep looking forward to in that universe, and I really think you'll enjoy it. So I just thought I'd give some Australian authors a bit of a shout-out, and yeah, just 
take a gander into those. I am, um, I think a lot of the times in fantasy YA stuff, so much attention is given to new releases, especially in the, in the American market, and it's nice to look back every now and then and, um, I don't know, look outside all the recent releases and just explore some different titles. And I guess I decided to be a bit patriotic, sorry if it's nauseating. So, um, yeah, just maybe give those a read if you want. And I'm going to go read some Graceling, because it's good. Okay, so, bye everybody. Have a nice day, or evening, or whatever. Okay, happy reading.